Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, Lunch and Learn live demo of Statistics Canada's Canadian Statistical Geospatial Explorer, hereby referenced forever as the Explorer. I'm David Weiss, the director of Humber College's Story Lab, a collaborative hub for data-driven innovation. I'm joined by uh, Paul Deschambeau, who is the project lead uh, for this project. And uh, I just wanted to thank you all for coming and hopefully this is uh, a great way for you to spend your lunchtime uh, during these uh, very uh, social distancing days. Uh, it, it's kind of, I'll, I'll just open with a quick story. Uh, this kind of came about, or at least uh, from uh, Paul and I met when he came to our most recent data-driven uh, journal of data journalism conference in Canada back in November. Uh, he identified himself very boldly as a member of Statistics Canada in a room full of journalists, which I thought was really brave, uh, and uh, said that he was there to listen uh, and, and hear about the ways that we could fill in, we could fill in data gaps in, uh, in, in output for reporters. Uh, he went back, said he had a great time, and I didn't hear from him until just a few weeks ago when he let me know that he had built this amazing tool. Uh, he'd taken in all the feedback and implemented a radical shift back at StatsCan, and I was absolutely blown away. So uh, right now, uh, Paul is going to take you through uh, the Explorer and the ways that you can use it. And, and once again, this isn't just for journalists. This is for researchers, curious Canadians, anyone who has an interest uh, in the information that shapes our country. And uh, Paul will we'll go through it. We've got Asim Manji, thank you, uh, unseen but very much appreciated on the controls. And uh, just thanks to StatsCan and Humber College for uh, helping us put this on. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass it to Paul. All righty. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you very much for coming to the uh, webinar today. So we're going to start off, of course, with just uh, a basic introduction. Uh, we'll look at the, the background. And as David was touching up on, uh, it started really at Data Driven. And we built a customized product for you guys. Um, so I'm going to jump right into the presentation here. I'm just going to pull it on up. Pardon me. All right, so we're good to go. And it starts off with, you know, visualizing data was 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 the main intent. We wanted a way for you guys to be able to um, bring our data into your workflow, uh, explore it, get to know it, um, draw conclusions, make up stories, um, and really just be able to explore. And uh, so we, we we started coming out uh, to to some of our, our stakeholders and meeting with them. And I remember meeting guys at Data Driven. And for those of you who are, are meeting for the first time, hello. And we we learned about some of the problems and some of the hardships and some of the great things about Statistics Canada's data getting into stories in the news. Um, I heard things about the the uh, transformation processes and the teams of data experts that would come together for some of these bigger stories. And we decided that we were going to find a way to uh, provide you guys a tool to help increase the amount of stories you can do. So we're going to jump in and I, I, I believe you can see my screen right now. We'll just go take a look at this. And it starts off obviously with data visualization. And of course, oh, We'll scroll down and that we're listening to your needs. So we came out and uh, we, we, we talked to you guys. We, we, we met with the, each and every one of you that we had time to. We went to the Power BI uh, sessions with Vera Chan at Microsoft. Thank you very much for, for uh, doing those. And we were able to identify things that could help your workflows. For instance, we heard a lot about finding data that going into St Statistics Canada, seeing what's available, going through the data tables, uh, it, it's, it can sometimes be time consuming and difficult to navigate. So we wanted a way for you to find data fast. And as you can see on that screen right there, we have um, similar to the way you would search for a product on Amazon, we created a dynamic set of filters that populate depending on the product you select. So for instance, everyone knows census and we've got information about age and sex, which is quite relevant right now in the current COVID uh, environment. And you can see that we, we have breakdowns for data by the date, of course, and the gender, the sex. So you can go in and pick, and of course, various values to display. But if you were to change that subject theme and category to let's say health data, you'll instantly notice that those filters are gonna change to that product. So rather than having to go in, drill down, read about it, um, and, and really get to know a product, right on your mobile device, your tablet, your desktop, 
uh, this application is going to tell you exactly what's in there and what you can filter by. And of course, then you can go and, and, and search within the data. We wanted a way for you to create visuals, stunning visuals. Um, one, of the, one of the key takeaways from Data Driven was it's not just the data, it's the story and how you communicate that story. It's an entire package that needs to come together. So we wanted to support that and we noticed that it was difficult. Actually, we saw a few um, really amazing visualizations done during the presentations and uh, we, we, we discussed afterwards how, what, what sort of efforts and resources went into doing that and it wasn't easy. So we wanted to see what we can do. And so this application, I'm, I'm pleased to announce there's some really great things for the visual part. It's not just about the data. It's about you guys being able to have everything you need, all the assets, all the data, um, and the context to, to produce great stories. Of course, this is a spatial database. Uh, when you look at data with satellite imagery, it just provides new context. Uh, it's very important, and you guys will be able to bring it into further analytical tools if you uh, want to do anything else. The sky is basically the limit. Base maps play a huge role in that context. So you can see there's building layers just right up front. And when you're looking at dissemination area data, which is our most granular detailed level data, you really want to be able to see where is this dissemination area? What dissemination area do I live in? And while we're on the topic of dissemination areas, that's, that's downtown Vancouver. And uh, to give you an idea of the number of dissemination areas across Canada, there's over 56,000. Um, the Explorer tool does have DA level data and you can explore it visually with satellite streets um, or the building layers. And uh, Paul, quick question for you. So so yeah. I know I've worked a lot with, uh, let's say, different wards, for example, in the city of Toronto. Can you give us some context as to what the dissemination area and how granular that actually is compared to, let's say, a city, a city ward? Yeah, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there was in around, well, now there's about 25 city wards in the Toronto area. Um, that's similar to our census subdivisions, which there's, uh, I believe in the GTA, there's about 20, 22 census subdivisions. Um, dissemination areas within that same area, I believe there's about 4,000. So it's it's fine level detail. We're talking about um, two, two uh, about, about about six to seven hundred uh, um, dwellings. So it's um, packed with information, rich, granular, detailed information. And when you think about a lot of the stories we were covering at Data Driven, when you're talking about the ones on um, the old growth trees, what's going on in the communities where the where, where where these trees are? And 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 when we're talking about the the uh, transit way and they were looking at the assaults in the transit way, where are these assaults happening and what's the demographic? And DA level can really play a huge part to that type of analysis. And I believe we can, uh, by, by bringing this information into your, your journalist's hands quickly and efficiently, we'll be able to get that um, uh, analytics produced a lot faster. So the other takeaway we learned is um, you guys wear many hats. Journalists have, uh, I, I was absolutely shocked at the, 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 the amount of work that you guys have to do in your workflow. It's from the very, very beginning to the very end. Um, there's, I, I assume that you guys had a, a data journalism um, team of experts, but what I'm realizing is the data journalism team of experts are also the story editors, but are also the, the infographic creators in many occasions. Um, so you're constantly learning new tools. You need a place to be able to go back, refresh, have information. So we also created you guys a bit of a hub. And I say a bit of a hub, it's always gonna be expanding. We're always gonna add to it based on your feedback. So if you guys wanna learn new things, we will absolutely put new things in there. So I'm just traveling to the hub right now and you can see it. We have a little note at the top. Uh, about the COVID situation, because when we launched the Explorer, we did load it with information that uh, was pertinent to COVID. We wanted to try to um, help help get as much information and data into the hands of researchers and journalists uh, that we could. So what we did is we put an asterisk within the application, and this just sort of highlights how we did that and why we did that, the purpose behind it. But it's a very simple and straightforward and clean uh, I'm just going to scroll back the size so it looks a little bit better. There we go. That looks much better. Um, very simple, straightforward visual tutorials. Uh, it's not a come in and watch a 
a, a two and a half hour long instruction document with 200 pages with a, a, an intensive reference. Very simple. Click on what you want to do. You want to find data. You find the data from the panel on the left. You're able to select your subject theme product, filter, select a value, and of course, apply it to a map and export data. We went through this very quick. Please do take the time, go in and look at these um, uh, uh, user guides we create, created. They're all built similar to this one, very visual, very quick. You can have it on a separate screen with the application at the same time, and it will really help you guys out. And it has some of the main workflows. And of course, we're gonna be covering these workflows later. For instance, creating a, a custom thematic map uh, in about a minute. So that's something that you guys can include in your reports and your articles, um, or, or even to get the discussion going to bring people together on the same page. So what we'll do is we'll jump right into the application. That's that's sort of the key ingredient here is the the um, the Explorer application. So we'll do uh, a bit of a demo and we'll go live into it now. And uh, Paul, I'll just say as you're getting that set up, that this is a Q&A style. We do have Q question and answer functionality. So as Paul is going through this demo, if you have any uh, questions that kind of come to mind, feel free to toggle on over and uh, put a uh, enter a question into the Q&A kind of window and I'll be moderating the questions. And at the end, once he's done, we can hopefully address as many of them as possible. Back to you, Paul. Awesome. Great. Yes, please do interrupt with questions. Any questions you guys have? So this is the the initial launch screen of the Explorer. When you first go in, uh, we, we've tailored it to the COVID situation and we've uh, produced health indicators. So right, right off the bat, we're looking at chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, COPD. And it was something identified by our, our partners at PHAC, the Public Health Agency in Canada as um, uh, pertinent to the COVID. So we have an asterisk beside it. And we did just to highlight uh, what we have uh, done to bring forth indicators. There's a little asterisk next to all the ones that uh, our partners at PHAC have identified is important to the current situation. So for any of our, our subjects, for instance, if we click on census, you'll see certain themes have that asterisk. And within that theme and the category, you'll see the continuation. But let's jump right in. Let's take a look. Um, let's start off by just getting the basic layout of the application. So on the left hand side, it's all about data. Uh, so it right starts off with the find data tab at the beginning. Up at the top, you'll see a toolbar here, and this will allow you to bring open a data table. Right now, of course, there is no data in it, but if I were to select on a particular region, it would add it to the data table. So if I wanted to, let's say, only select particular um, areas within the GTA or Vancouver or Montreal for an analysis, I can do so and, and uh, keep that as my area of focus. We also have charting. So you can look at, and I believe it's being cut because of my taskbar, but you can see the, the, the charting between the two different areas. And as I highlight, you'll see them change on the map. When you select on one area versus another, it will bring related indicators. So this is bringing up a total of disease. And I'm just going to move it up so we can see it between the two various health regions that I'm selecting right now. We have a button for the find data and then of course styling the data. So one important thing we wanted to do was allow you guys to change the colors. And I mean right off the bat this map, many of you might be looking at it and going great map great tool not a fan of the color choice well that that's fine uh, who are we to presuppose what you want to do with your data so you can go on in by selecting the map styling tab and update and apply whatever colors you want change it create the map and then uh, to, to suit your personal preferences Here we are. You can also go ahead and change the base maps down the base map selection tool located on the bottom. And satellite imagery is one of my favorite ones. It really helps show highlight the data. You can turn labels on. You're probably looking at these and going, what do these geographies mean? Well, when we zoom on in, we'll click on the toggle labels button. It's just going to refresh the map with the data. And you'll see that we now have information. So if you're going to um, be writing a story about a particular area, you want to know what area it is, you can now see it 
on the map, or you can click on a particular area and it will bring up the health region, the value you're seeing, and what breakdown of data you're looking at. Lastly, up at the top here, we have export. And uh, we won't go too deep into that because that's uh, in the workflow. And I'll show you an example of the thematic map. But it, here it is, the uh, map charts or reports. So there's a few things you can export from the application to really help get you going. One more thing is there's a little chart table uh, menu right here, or, or a data table menu, I apologize. And uh, within it, you can switch to charting. It's sort of a toggle back and forth and switch back to the table, but it has one neat functionality and that's export to shapefile. And for those of you that create infographics, um, shapefiles is basically an SVG. It can be converted to an SVG. Uh, so if you're using Adobe Illustrator or Canva and you wanna create something, let's say a fine granular detail for Toronto to be able to put into your own publication, you can select the areas and export to the shapefile, which will bring in an SVG. And of course, we have Excel and the CSV formats. Close this on down. We'll go back to the Find Data page and we'll look at some data here. I'll just zoom on out a bit. So in the current situation, there's a few, um, we're, we're gonna sort of look at examples that are pertinent to COVID today. Uh, a lot of our, 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 our uh, current viewers right now will find that very interesting and relevant. So we're gonna take a look at census and we're gonna look at the age and we'll look at age characteristics. Um, as we did so, we see the changing of the filters and how it dynamically populates. So like I was saying, uh, we, we like to do it like you'd find a product on Amazon. When you click on book publishers, you're going to see filters for the genre, the, um, uh, the date it was published, maybe the, the uh, by author. But if you change it to electronics, you'll get a whole other relevant set of filters to electronics. Like is it televisions, type of electronic, um, a manufacturer, but again, rather than having you drill down into the data tables on the website, the application is going to serve that up dynamically. So it's right there for you. Now, one thing that's neat to look at is always the average and the median ages. Uh, let's look at Toronto. Let's deep dive right down into the GT area and let's take a look at the average age of your population. Let's do it by dissemination area. And one neat thing to notice is on the left hand side, it pre-populates. So once you select your combination, it goes and it searches all the available levels of geography. So you were talking about wards earlier, David. Um, wards aren't one of our standard geographies, but any geography that a data point is available that we have, you'll be able to see it in that drop down list. And right away, you can just click on a geography. Um, if you don't know what a census metropolitan area is, just click CMA, it'll apply it on a map. You can see, okay, that's a census metropolitan area, census subdivision same sort of thing we can make it apply and you can get a, a gist of the levels of granularity of detail that data it or data comes in from our agency and i'll just say right now paul uh depending on the computer you have you might want to close some of your additional tabs before you load it because as you'll see as these uh, census subdivisions come up uh they are processing a lot of uh, a lot of different polygons so just keep that in mind yeah, sorry, I apologize for that. I do have, uh, I, I believe I have three, three, three separate uh, monitors going on this system. We're, we're pulling some intensive uh, um, um, RAM here. It's, uh, we'll be quicker and I hope a lot of you are tying up the servers right now by clicking and playing with the application as we're doing this uh, uh, webinar. But the neat one, of course, the one we're all here for is the granular data. So this is new. This is Something that is very difficult to get in Stats Canada is DA level data. Um, right now, the only form or method to access our, our, our uh, dissemination level, uh, dissemination area level detail is through CSV tables. And these CSV tables, I believe one of them was about 14 gig. So it's a lot of data and not your average person is going to be able to process it. But if you only want to know the average age of the population at a dissemination area um, within the GTA, you only need a couple kilobytes of that 14 gig. So in here, you're able to just apply the one indicator. Um, as you can see, we've got a bit of a problem. We have too much detail. 
which is uh, a great thing to have. So we're going to keep zooming in there. That's how that's how detailed our dissemination area data is. So here we are. We're looking at the average age of the population. Um, I'm not uh, very familiar with the Toronto area, David. So you and, and a lot of the people uh, that are watching at home would be um, uh, possibly noting noticing some hot spots, uh, areas to uh, analyze. For me to sort of help me get a feeling of what's going on, I'm going to remove some of the things in here that I, I don't think would be very important. I'm going to look at the older generation. I'm going to look at areas of your city that have hot pockets of, of, of people who are uh, very senior. So we're going to look at, I guess, we'll look at around 60 years of age. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all these other ones from the map. Um, you know what, we'll say at 50 plus. We'll look at these two groups. And we'll look at them in more detail and see if there's anything that uh, um, stands out. So as you can see, you guys have a very um, um, distributed geographically um, groups. There's not really a concentration, but as you go in, you might start noticing some other indicators like it might be apartment buildings, it could be senior facilities, uh, and of course we have that data so you can go on in and check that out as well. But it's nice to be able to change what you see within the application. You can highlight only particular areas of interest and we can zoom right on in and see what is this area? What is the average age? It's 63 years old. Um, you know, it seems a lot of apartment buildings could be community centers. But you're able to just go right into the detail. You can even say, well, let's look at the building, the actual buildings that are there, the streets, the parks. What what is this place? What is this area? Um, so bringing the data together with the geographic context helps you guys instantaneously analyze. Um, most of you are very familiar with the map of Toronto and you, you, you might have some, um, I guess, um, guesses of where uh, certain stories may be. So this seeing the data in this format will really help you guys uh, contextually understand what is going on in the ground and then bring the value add of and it was mentioned many times in data driven bringing two seemingly random data sources together and just seeing what's there because sometimes that's where the goal of the story is uh, so we'll just go back to the find data tab of course that's sort of the, the the central the central point of the application and we'll take a look at another data data set and this I actually want to highlight the data set not as much as the application the application is awesome I, I absolutely love it but uh, same with uh, what the people in our business register did so we we have this um, um, new uh, product that was created and we don't normally release data from our business register at a dissemination area but under the current COVID climate, we found a huge need to provide more granular level data to decision makers about our senior uh, senior care facilities and our long-term care facilities. So if you go into subject community facilities, you'll see a product called senior care facilities. And this comes from StatCan's business register where uh, we, we track non-for-profit, government organizations, private. Um, it's, it's a great registry that we use for populating our survey frames. Um, and knowing the universe of what's out there in Canada. And uh, we were able to produce this product April 2020 of nursing care facilities and community care facilities for the elderly. And you can see the totals for both. And it's at a dissemination area level. Uh, health region as well. So if you want to, if your story is more, more centric on the health region, you can of course take a look at it by health regions. But let's take a look at the DA level data uh, for, for Toronto. So what we have is it's only going to show if it's if there's no um, um, facility, it will not show on the map. We'll only see areas in which there are facilities and you'll see certain concentrations. For instance, we have six in this one particular area. That's a very concentration. Um, so it's a lot of vulnerable people in a small geographic segment. And, and when we look at COVID, uh, COVID is a geographic disease. It travels from person to person spatially. Uh, so it, 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 there could be a story there. I'm not familiar with the area like you guys are in the community, um, but there's many stories that can be easily identified just by looking at the uh, um, the data spatially. 
And of course, bringing satellite imagery into the mix, we are able to see more information. Uh, if we really want to make it pop to see where the areas are, we can put it just a standard gray base map on it. And now we can see the concentration, the distribution, of course, the areas that are um, having the, the greatest number of facilities. And of course, we can take a look at the nursing care facilities as well and switch over and see both. So there's great value in just being able to change from one indicator to another. Um, we were just looking at census two seconds ago, spatially exploring, um, being able to switch instantaneously to another one and then being able to go through that same steps to explore the data. It, it allows you to sort of bring together what you were just referencing with what you're currently referencing. And if you do want to bring it together and link and join for further analysis, we always have this button and this is my favorite button. I'm, I'm big on doing uh, um, data analytics. I, I'm kind of a, a data science guru. Um, like like many of the, the people in the data driven audience, my passions, the stories behind the data uh, as well. So you can go ahead and you can say, I want to download all 56,000 records on the map in, uh, uh, in Excel, in a simple Excel format. So you can take every point for that census, for that indicator, open it in a familiar tool that is a standard operating uh, uh, desktop. And of course, we'll just go ahead and open this just to give you guys an idea of the file that we're seeing. And I'll just switch it on over to this screen here quick. So here we are. Here's a, a, a quick, quick screenshot of the export. So, so very, and this was based on the feedback from Data Driven, actually. Um, it was the comments of the stories are where you take seemingly random data, bring it together. You never know what you're going to find inside. And we thought, well, how do we allow them to bring as many random data sets together? And it was the linear regression format, just a simple Excel table where you have one value for the geography and you can go and export another geography and have its values and do a link by this one key called the DGUID. So we'll have training and there'll be lots more information onto our, our hub where you can go and learn how to uh, do this in detail and walk through step by step um, coming in the future. And uh, we will uh, definitely have uh, a few examples of, I believe, very, very, very shortly uh, of joins that were done spatially for um, geospatial analytics. So we'll close this on down, but it's uh, a very simple format. You're, you're always the columns are on the top row, very clean structure to it. Something that you can just drag and drop into Power BI, drag and drop into Tableau, drag and drop into uh, ArcGIS online, whatever you use. We just simply wanted it to be easy to get out into your workflow. So we won't presuppose what software you're going to use. We're just going to make sure we put it in a format that can be um, consumed oh, by it. Well, did you hear that? Did you hear that? the collective sigh of anyone who's ever opened up a census data spreadsheet oh yes yeah. yes um yeah the the the, the, the infamous census spreadsheet and and you know what this was a great um uh project for stats can to really step into your shoes and because in building this app we had to go through that census spreadsheet line by line by line to transform uh, so we really got to empathize with what you guys do uh, for for on a day to day basis. So having this data in this format, um, it, it's something that I, I we, we we're we're glad to offer, and we'd rather do it the one time than have you guys do it thousands and thousands of times. So we'll 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 have multiple formats for our data and stats can going forward, and we want to be more user centric. So if you have a format, if you have suggestions or ideas. We're, it's not it's not like this project's done. This project is always, it's sort of that Kaizen mentality. It's continuous improvement. Um, as soon as we think we're done, we, we will, we will, it will no longer be a useful product. So do send your comments and feedback. And we always have two areas you can do it. And I wanna highlight those areas. If you have anything media related, a media request, you wanna get in touch with our, our, our media, media hotline. Um, these people have their thumb on the pulse on every subject matter area within Statistics Canada, and they'll really get you an answer quickly. If you want to provide us information and suggestions and feedback on the tool, data that we could load going next, we have InfoStats. So it's InfoStats 
Um, and if you go onto our website or Google and just type in InfoStats, all the contact information will be there. And of course, we'll share it with the group afterwards. David, I'll be sure to uh, uh, share that contact information with you and post it on out. We'll make sure we have it on the Explorer Hub as well. But don't hold back your criticism, your feedback, and, and especially the praise. I do, I do enjoy that from time to time. Um, so uh, we, can we can always continue to improve and get you uh, of the things you want. And uh, to give an example, you'll notice in this data table here, uh, we were doing a demo with um, um, Tara, uh, I believe, from the, 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 the Canadian press. And she had mentioned Vector would be great for, for helping us reference the, the data sets. And already we have our, our, our people looking into this and uh, creating the, the vector into the data table area. So it was great feedback. We, we looked at it. It was something we can do. And let's, let's just go ahead and do it for you guys. So definitely keep us informed of, of, of your needs. We, we want to be uh, relevant to you. So we're going to close this one on down. And we'll look at some more census data because there's about a thousand plus indicators for census. Um, so in total in the census profile, you guys are, many of you are very familiar with the census profile. I think it was references when, when, when the census was released, it was like Christmas. Uh, so I know you guys really use that product. Um, th there are, it's a massive quantity of information. So they create something called a profile. It contains about 1600 indicators and they release it at the dissemination area across Canada. That's the big one that you guys are going in and downloading. And in fact, it's so big that we have to split it up by geographic areas. So there's one for, let's say, provinces and dissemination areas. There's another one for metropolitan areas. In the Explorer, the data is just all here. It's just on the left-hand side. You find, you click, you filter. So let's take a look at some on uh, labor. Um, and you know what, let's take that uh, uh, occupation and our health occupations. Uh, we have a lot of people that are currently um, um, working really, really, really hard in overtime. And, and let's see if there's any particular areas. How many are in the GTA? How many in each dissemination area? Um, what are the number of people currently in these professions? And we're able to go in and see right away any hot pockets or areas of concentration that they live you can compare Toronto. Um, Toronto, you guys have a have a great number, but when you start going up north, and there was a lot of discussion about data up north and northern communities, you'll start to notice it, um, differences. That there's 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 less. There's only you know approximately ten in this particular one, twenty in another. Uh, it's it's quite uh, quite small for some of these communities. Um, that might need hundreds or have, uh, have, have, have hundreds and hundreds of, of um, residents that could potentially be impacted. So there's plenty of stories there up north at the DEA level as well with census. And, and when we talk about, you know, in the current COVID context, to be able to see uh, who is there, what resources are available if, the, uh, uh, if there was an outbreak in a particular community, what is their capacity to deal with it? And, and this will help you visualize that information across Canada. And we'll take a look at another um, product that we have as well that I wanna bring your attention to, and it's a deprivation index. And this is a, a great one. So it's the index of multiple deprivation. And this was one of the ones we shared with our partners, our provincial partners, during the uh, emergency uh, in uh, St. John's. So when we had the snowstorm in St. John's, the uh, Canadian forces came in and helped. And uh, we used the deprivation index, and I believe it was the situational vulnerability. It was, I believe they made their own combination using the three, but there was emphasis on situational vulnerability within the St. John's area. And it allowed them to sort of determine which houses uh, within this particular product, which houses are, are, are not up to par. Uh, the, the amount of snow they got had huge, heavy snow loads on people's roofs. So we, we knew that if it wasn't properly maintained dwelling and situational vulnerability has that factored into it, um, that they were at risk. It also had to do with uh, information on their age, how new they were to the community. So there's a few of these indices um, that were produced, not, not 
particularly um, by Stats Can, it was in partnership with with one of our, our trusted partners. And so it's an example of the Explorer. We, it can hold our census data. It can hold our survey data, but we can also bring in valuable data at a DA level in this instance from our, our partners as well um, to integrate it. So you guys have a one-stop shop data portal. So we can bring more and more and more. Um, and that was basic, based on feedback from, from Data Driven as well, is that you don't want to go to 50, 60 data visualizations, tools or sources. The, the ease, the simplicity comes from it all being in one spot, in one format. And, and that was the, the thing when you can have a, um, I guess the, the geography level, we call it a dissemination area or census metropolitan area. But when data comes out in consistent boundaries, you guys can then bring random data sources together and do an analysis and and the tool will allow us to bring in those external sources as well and integrate it with uh with our data to bring you guys more value so when you're when you're looking at requests and um, uh, if there's data value from other our other federal partners or federal stakeholders um that you you think would provide value within the explorer do do let us know so paul on that note we did have a question uh from april lindgren who i know is uh at ryerson university does the uh community i'll give a shout out to her local uh, news mapping project where she she uh, keeps track of news organizations and newspapers uh, local news across uh the country so hi april uh, her question was could you create a layer for municipal ward boundaries that can be overlaid on census tracts and DA level? Because that would make it easier for city reporters to compare what's happening at the city ward level in different communities. For example, using a deprivation index, uh, but for different communities within city wards. That is an awesome question. And um, what we can do is make that easy for you. So that's actually a, 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 a great workflow, a great example of how you'd want to build custom, a custom product, custom boundaries. So within stats, we don't aggregate the data, our census data at that particular level. But what I think you'd want to do is take a look at all the DAs, the micro, the granular level details we do have within the wards, and there could be 100, 200, 500, and compare that from one ward to the next, to the next, to the next. So with this tool, we're about empowering you to do that. And I think one of the great tools, it's free, it's open source and available, is Google Earth. Um, so Google Earth, you can actually import the shape, the KML, whatever type of file your boundaries are in, and you can simply export the data from here. And then you can overlay the two. So they have the transparency slider, and you can uh, overlay multiple data sets to build your own index using the transparency slider, or you can um, overlay different boundaries. And, and you can draw your own boundaries even and pick and choose. Um, you can look at old wards versus new wards and see the changing trend of that. The biggest problem before was getting that stat can data into a geospatial format and then getting those wards in a geospatial format. Um, I mean, sorry, not in a geospatial format. Wards are in a geospatial format into the, the product with the census ones. So here we serve it up into the shapefile import the shapefile into ArcGIS. Google Earth, it's a free one. Um, you could use Power BI. It's not really meant for that, but it definitely would be able to do it with their with their shapefiles. Uh, so there's a, a bunch of tools out there that you could that you could use to be uh, for that task, for that workflow. And it's simply exporting this one in, the, in a shapefile format and over, bring it into, let's say, Google Earth and then overlaying the board boundaries. And then you can just go in, do your analysis, and uh, the good thing with Google Earth is uh, you can drill right down and actually get street view and walk the data, walk the dissemination area, the block, live the data and see what is going on in the story. Great, Paul. So yeah, uh, so would, would we ever be able to bring in actually municipal data right into this tool? Or are you suggesting that the workflow would be that we would export this data and, and export the other data and then do it in a platform like Google Earth or ArcGIS or another GIS, uh, GIS program. That that's that's right. Um, so we we will uh, uh, this tool is basically pre populated with data that we've uh, curated. Um, we've already brought the um, geospatial uh, uh, integration to it. 
Um, so it's really for consumption. It's, it's about bringing it into your workflow fast, exporting it for your needs. So if you wanted to do analytics with it, you would export it into your own tool. And what we found was there was a variety of tools. People went off to university and used ArcGIS, or they used Power BI exclusively, or Tableau, um, and they didn't, there wasn't so much an appetite to learn our, our new one. Um, so what we did was how, how can we just make it so our data can get into yours, what you're familiar with, ASAP. And then you can stick to um, the, the, the tools that you know and love already. All right, well, that's great. I think your video might be a little frozen, Paul, but uh, we're definitely still taking uh, questions, uh, which, you, which you can definitely answer. Uh, so we've already taken a few now. Uh, is there uh, maybe you wanted to talk a bit about uh, where you really see this tool going in the future? Well, for this uh, tool, we're, we're expanding the data that's going into it. Um, and right now, our, our needs are, are based upon um, the, the, the current COVID environment. So we're looking uh, to PHAC um, to, to identify what's important to them. And we're really working with our, our, our trusted partners and our stakeholders. Um, and of course, we want to bring in data that's pertinent to Canadians. And you, you guys, the, and when I say you guys, I mean journalists, you're, you guys communicate to them daily. You have your thumb on the pulse of what's important to uh, the people at their homes as well as at their jobs. And um, so we really look to you guys for feedback on where to go. Um, it's it's going to be, a, a, it was a collaborative creation and it's going to be a collaborative continuation. So um, ultimately it's not really, that's a good question for for you guys too, is where where will where will we go? And uh, um, ultimately, we're going to get data in there right now based upon the current needs identified. But uh, further further expansions of it, we definitely are looking to the community um, for where you want to see it go. All right, well that sounds great. Um, I know I'm looking forward to uh, to playing around with it myself uh, more than I have. Uh, yeah, let's see if we've got any more questions right now. Let's see. We are taking all the questions. Oh, we got some more questions here. Yep. Can you export? Uh, Yannick from StatCan asks, can you export a thematic map? Just taking a look at this. Camera. Awesome. So just fixing this camera here, David. I apologize. Sure, no problem. Like everyone's using the internet or something. Ah, there we go. Yeah. There. All right, great. Much better. That's now great. we can actually. <laughs> so yeah, so the question was, can you export a thematic map? Absolutely. And that's part of the walkthrough, David. We're going to do uh, an example walkthrough of that right now. And this is something that you'll, um, I, I, April was saying she was in a local media office, if I'm correct. Uh, well, she April. Well, she she uh, she definitely focuses on local journalists. She's at, based out of Ryerson, but she works with a lot of uh, local news journalists. Okay, so this this is a great feature for for our local journalists. And, and uh, let's go ahead and different places to to showcase, and that's Cape Breton Island. Um, the reason why is they don't get they don't get many shout outs. So we'll 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 give them a, a bit of a shout out right now. Uh, let's take a look at their age and we'll just look at age characteristics and um, let's look at the median age of the population here. So we'll go ahead, we'll apply that. And of course, this is a thematic map. So if if I'm making it for, for my city, um, you know, in Ottawa, I believe the colors are blue. In, in, in Vancouver, they, they have a green, uh, a blue. Pick what we, we, we want it to be um, able to be customized and configured to your audience, your target group. So you can go on in and say, OK, my target group, they want to see satellite imagery. And of course, we would prefer a, a certain particular style to it and just make as many adjustments. 
And in fact, you can go ahead and adjust the, the breaks. And this is a neat little feature. So if we decided that we wanted to make a particular group, we were going to do a story and we wanted to talk about communities that had a, a median population um, less than 20 years old or up to 20. We would then go change the uh, group, that particular break, and we would see it instantaneously adjust. And we'll go ahead and we'll apply. So we can customize the breaks, we can customize the coloring. Um, it's, it's ultimately the thematic map that you want to create is up to you. So you go ahead and you style the thematic map on the screen. And you will we'll say this, a little bit dark for my taste, but David, we'll, we'll make sure we uh, uh, change it in a moment. And we can go in, of course, and, uh, oh, here we go click on our export. So top right hand corner in the uh, top menu, uh, we have the report, the charts and the map. And I'm just going to be open disclosure. Our charts are not the prettiest charts at the moment. We had the, the, the team of the some of the greatest, uh, as you can see, geospatial experts, um, not not one for picking colors for charts. So uh, we will uh, be open there. Um, and of course, when you're printing your map, we're gonna, you have a few options and it's really the sizing that, that it comes down to. Um, the format is PDF, we just kept it simple. We wanted to make it the one style. The scale is your zoom level. So that is what you're zooming into. So uh, we always say it's much easier to zoom in, style the map beforehand, and then you're good to go. So for this one, we're looking at Cape Breton Island. And it's the median age. And for notes, we can say census data was easy to integrate. All right, so you can lock, and as you can see, this just makes the border box around it change, and we print to PDF. So this is something that we used to do. Um, for for uh, custom requests so media organizations would sometimes reach out to us and say we'd like to place an order for uh, our, our thematic map and uh, what we ha now have is the ability for local uh, journalists to be able to go into their local community and create custom thematic maps on thousands of indicators in seconds um, put their own title they have the proper sort, um, citation information and the notes um, and, and they can start publishing and including it within their reports, within their articles, within presentations. Um, you can imagine right now there's probably a lot of uh, presentations and discussions about areas and communities that are vulnerable or uh, have a, um, a higher uh, average age of population. This is a great way to bring everyone around the table into that discussion quickly and see right away what is going on in this particular community. Yeah, this is one of the features that just blew me away because I feel like, you know, I've, I've seen these maps. I feel like I, I want to print one of these out for my wall. Well, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I'm a, a big fan of this one and it's uh, a huge benefit to um, to your users, just generic users, people that just want to be able to uh, communicate the information. Now I'm just going to switch back here. It seems to be a little bit locked in this PDF. So we'll close this on down. Now, for the people that are in Toronto, we're going to take a look at um, uh, an infographic that comes up, and I've seen a lot in the press, um, in the media. Uh, we were talking about wards. This would be the similar to the wards. It would be our, our um, census subdivisions. So we'll go ahead and click on the Find Data tab. And of course, the I want to menu is also a central place. So if you're using your cell phone, you're going to see the I want to menu front and center. Uh, we, we, we did design this for mobile use. So if you're, you're, you're um, when quarantine's uplifted and we're able to walk around, go to parks, you can, you can go explore census data in any park you want on a nice summer day. 
Um, in Ottawa, we always say you could be stuck on a train because our, our trains are, are notoriously horrible for braking. Um, so we say you can be stuck on a train and still complete your minister's exercise. Um, mobile and tablet first was was a huge important. We, we found that actually one thing we noticed is journalists don't really have an office. Um, it's, it's always go, 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 go. Sometimes it's home, sometimes it's someone else's office, sometimes it's a team one, sometimes it's collaborative at like the story lab. It's always on the go. So we wanted a way that you can access our data on the go as well. So we'll take a look at our census subdivision. And uh, we've looked a lot at age, but let's look at income. That's a nice one. Let's look at low income in Toronto. And uh, we'll look at um, low income after tax measure. We'll just zoom out a bit. So this is census subdivision. It's not as low of a granularity as per se dissemination area. There's about 5,000 across Canada, as you can see here in a second. It will just refresh and do the load. So about 5,000 data points. Um, if there's no data for a particular area, you can click on it and it will tell you why. And that's another great thing. So we, it explains there's why there's a, a, a suppression. It will say it wasn't um, uh, of quality or maybe it was uh, suppressed or out of scope. We'll have information there. So in Toronto, I see the infographic, a lot of the GTA census subdivisions. Um, and then it's highlighting uh, uh, basically what is uh, you know the current economic like economic uh, information, number of people, number of crimes, um, various data points, and it's always covering this general area of the GTA. Well, not the full GTA, but the Toronto, uh, Greater Toronto area. So, if we wanted to create a high resolution SVG infographic, and uh, when I'm talking about that, I'll show you an example here. So, this would be the example of uh, uh, an infographic using the, the, the export from the tool. So this was a, a uh, built using Adobe Illustrator and uh, we exported the Cape Breton Island. As I was saying, I'd like to give a shout out to Cape Breton Island and that was the sh original shout out. And it was simply by clicking the areas as we're doing here. And if you forget anything I'm saying, don't worry, go to the hub. There's instructions in a visual manner that you can follow along with to see. And you can export your shapefile and you'll save it and that you can make it in an SVG. You can bring it into Canva, you can bring it into Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, whatever tool you're familiar with, and uh, you'll be able to start building some custom print quality infographics. And what about if you hit the chart view right now, Paul? If you hit the chart button, as you got all these uh, highlighted. Perfect. Alrighty, so we're looking at low income. Let's go ahead. Now, there's a lot of them, so the names are getting a little squished. So when you mouse hover, you'll see the full name. And when we click on them, we'll be able to see a distribution of the age breakdown. So we're looking at the uh, low income. Toronto has a high amount. If we were, for instance, to look at one that it might help give greater context. So we'll go ahead, we'll do that. I'll click on a few areas. We'll add it to the chart. Percent always, uh, always helps there. So you can see right away the areas in which there's uh, um, something and something not going on. Great, and we had another question, uh, Paul. The question was, is there Agriculture Canada data integrated into the Explorer? There is no Agriculture Canada data. So right now we currently have Census, Community and Health. Uh, within the sensors and a lot of products, um, it, it's quite quite large. Uh, community, there's a few. We have a proximity index, which is a new one at the CSD level. Um, and this was uh, remoteness for the uh, COVID. It was a specific COVID request that we had. 
Um, but there's no agricultural data uh, yet. Uh, I'm assuming that the question is coming from a user who, who would be um, uh, curious to see or want to see it. Um, and do let us know. Do, do, do let uh, stats can know. That would be a great thing to let our info stats uh, team aware of that you would like to see uh, agricultural data into the uh, application and it can help put us on the radar and and get it into the workflow why don't we uh why don't we do that right now actually paul why don't we show them where if they want to get their agriculture data now how would they or maybe not now but if they wanted to to get their 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 question how would they how would they go about doing that there's two major um um uh, channels and uh there's of course if this is for your project if this is for your your workflow and you need a media request I definitely encourage going through the media hotline. Um, truthfully, these these guys, uh, they apply great pressure. They follow up. They know who to contact to. They, they're basically your right hand internally. They, they really do work to help you guys um, and get you responses fast is the key word. So we'll, we'll definitely showcase that one. And uh, we'll also take a look at our um, media hotline. So if you want to just contact us uh, we always have our feedback form at the bottom of the page so if you're looking at the explorer for instance let's just do 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 do, do the explorer hub sorry guys going back and forth you can always go on in here this will bring us to our info stats so if you say like does this information meet your needs you know yes to some extent um, what was the, the request was specific for agriculture uh, Canada data? Canada data would be and if I, I'm, I'm just sort of presupposing it would be beneficial and in, in the tool. Um, beneficial. As you're looking that up, I'll just say we got another comment from uh, Alice. At, I believe from StatsCan, who says we are looking into this right now and talking to our agriculture stats program. So there you go. Look at that. On Perfect. Service. Perfect. So so we're, we're, we're also doing that. Oh, there's my wife's email. Um, so I guess my wife will be doing the submission. So this is exactly how to do it. Um, note we here. It may be coming. We'll submit it and now we've got it tracked. So when we're having discussions with, with our, our federal partners and, and, and trying to come up with a priority, we're able to say, listen, the public has really shown a lot of interest in this particular data set and, and we'll help to, to provide for you guys. Like we said, we're a, a big shift to a user centric agency. Um, Anil, Anil's really been big on go out, go out there and ask them what they want. Don't, don't presuppose anything um let them decide so tell us what you need and we we will respond that's great in the media hotline uh, i posted in the in the side uh, commenter maybe just show it takes the media hotline as well uh sure. and it's a great resource even if you're not doing data stuff i can just say that uh it's always been great absolutely so we always have our media hotline it should be on our agenda Media relations, media hotline. So, the the like I, I can't I can't praise these people enough. They're very very diligent. Um, first hand knowledge to their diligence. They follow up, follow up, follow up. If you guys have a request, um, they will not stop until your request is resolved. You can always and of course our info stats, general inquiries and information. Please do pass on any information. Um, they will they they send it immediately to our team. Our team aggregates it and collects it for future priority planning. Great. And as we're so we're starting to wind down now. So we got one more question. And if we have any more questions, uh, please uh, get them in now. Uh, another question was, how about data on socioeconomic and other stats for indigenous communities? That would be helpful too. All right. Well, we have socioeconomic data within the census. Um, we'll take a look here at some of the things we do have, but there's definitely areas to improve. Um, we, there's lots of data that Stats Canada has that is currently not in the Explorer. Um, we got to start somewhere, so this is great to, to know what is relevant to you guys. 
But to highlight what we do have right now is the Aboriginal peoples and Aboriginal population. There's um, quite a number of, of, of uh, variables that are in there. So we can say, um, you know, um, number of First Nations. Sure, we'll take a look at that at a dissemination area level. And uh, actually, there's an area right on this uh, uh, map between, I believe, Niagara Falls, like when you're traveling, that is in uh, Native community. So we'll be able to see. This is dissemination area. And let's just click on the data tab. Remember I was telling you guys? So it's not available for a specific reference period. Which would be 2016, because that's what you, you're referencing. Yeah. 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 So if there's any data gaps, I just wanted to highlight there. We do actually, it's not, there's a response not available. If it says F in the value, it just means the quality wasn't good enough for us to be able to, to disclose. Um, so we do like to be uh, uh, forthcoming there. So we do have a little bit of information, but I think you're more curious about information up north. So let's take a look up. This is Northern Ontario. Okay. So we do have quite a bit of information up north for Northern Ontario. And it's great because right away, just looking on the screen, uh, you know, the question was, what information do you have? Well, this is the one indicator value to display. Um, we have it for both male and female. And you're able to see where the where the gaps are. You're able to see where um, we have great levels of granularity and detail. Uh, the good thing about exploring data visually is all the all the good, the bad, the stories. It really pops. It comes on out. Um, so you can go ahead and there, to remind everyone, there's 56,000 geographies currently being loaded. I probably shouldn't have zoomed out so much. There we are. So as you can see, the, the GTA is completely turned into a, a, a dark spot because there's so much data. Uh, so when we look up north, you'll see it's a little bit better, but great granularity. So there's some of these northern communities here, uh, northern Ontario. Um, it, it's very difficult. And one other thing, journalists, um, that I that I heard was, where is what's the name of a DA for this northern community or for um, you know one one thing I like to say is what what's the dissemination area that your mother lives in, or your your school your children's school or even yourself. Uh, myself being a SAC hand employee, I have no idea. Uh, I still don't know any. I have an idea. So anytime I'm trying to find out information about like me personally, I use the tool to sort of get myself context. What is that dissemination area number? And then I can search all sorts of information. I can see what's going on in, in the areas around and bring in other data sources. But a lot of the times, if I were to say, what what are the what are the dissemination areas that are in uh, Markham? It's, it's a very difficult thing to do. And, and it's, it would be very time consuming um, for a journalist to be able to answer that question. So the tool, you just point and click. Great. Well, Paul, I think that's uh, bringing us, I think, to the end of this uh, live q and I'm sure you have uh, some other stuff to get back. You have to get back and implement all these uh, requests. That yeah. Are made. So, yeah, I mean, if you have any questions, I think Paul may be on Twitter at some point, uh, but you can always email infostats as well, as, as he mentioned. And once again, thanks to Paul Deschambeau and, and Statistics Canada for all their work on this. I'm David Weiss, the Director of Story Lab at Humber College. Uh, thanks to the Faculty of Media and Creative Arts, as well as Applied Research and Innovation for everything. And uh, yeah, I hope that uh, you learned something today. And for those that couldn't watch this, uh, we you can tell your, your friends and colleagues that we will be, uh, this was recorded and we will be hosting it somewhere sometime soon. So thanks a lot and uh, stay safe.